Hey y'all, welcome to Survival on the Skinny with Stephen Kenny. That's me. Enough of that. Well, it's been asked to me a few times, and I promised a few people I would do a video just on stropping. What a strop is a device used to polish the edge of your knife, right? So you've got a sharp knife. Okay, great. You've sharpened it, you, you've done everything you can do. What needs to be done is the very edge needs to be polished, strop, okay? And what you're doing is every time you sharpen a knife, you're putting ridges and valleys, okay, in that edge. The stropping is just taking it to that next level, making sure your edge is sharpest as the sharpest could be. Can't get any sharper, I mean, you're splitting atoms, okay? So, first things first, you'll probably remember from like the old, uh, the old barber chairs had that great big leather hanging, big leather piece, big leather belt hanging off the side of the barber's chair. Well, that's what his strop was. He would take his straight razor and run it on that strop, okay, to keep the edge. Much like a belt, okay. I wear leather belts for that very reason. I can take this belt if I'm in the woods, I can hang this up on a limb. And then I've got my strop, so I can strop using my belt. Okay? Next we have mounted strops, board strops. Uh, this one was made for me by Mr. Brad Beamers uh, a few years ago. I have used it over and over and over and over again. I maintenance my knives with strops. I barely ever have to sharpen them, keep the maintenance up, which is dropping. Uh, some people pronounce it strope. Okay, so if you're from the north and you match it strope, a mounted strop is leather mounted to a wooden board. Okay, there are some, some people have mounted leather belts to a bat, a two by four, whatever, you're getting the same result. Uh, I reached out to Brad and told him that my strop is getting a little worn. Uh, and by the way, this is what was the skinny strop for me, skinny, get it? So the skinny strop, because it's not square, it's, it's cut rectangular, it's skinnier. So he said, I got you. So he made me a new strop. This, that, this old strop is two-sided, okay, two-sided, two pieces of leather. The new one he made me is three-sided. You've got coarse leather and then a really slick, smooth leather on this side. Um, again, he did all the wood burning. Look, he engraved it, survival on the skinny. Ain't that cool? He does quality work, by the way. Look him up, Brad Beamers. Okay, so he made me this three-sided strop and I told him I needed a strop for recurves. A recurve knife, uh, much like this Norseman. You see how the blade curves back in? That's called a recurve, okay? So it curves back in. That's a, that, that, this knife has cut for days because of all the curve in it, okay? This, using on a flat strop, when you go to stropping the edge, you're only making contact at the two outer points. And so, you can strop a recurve on a flat board. It's a little different process. And you're going from heel all the way up to the tip. So you're stropping sideways with a very, very, very long motion. Okay. So you can strop these on a flat board. However, there's a better way. And Brad made me a better way. This is a curved strop. For recurve blades. Now I'm making full contact with that recurve and when I pull it's best of the best right there. That strops. There's several different kinds. This is a strop that a buddy of mine made me. Look how thin that thing is. It's a mounted leather on a paint stick. That's essentially what it is. He does a great job with it uh, and he, he went ahead and loaded it with some compound with some black and some green. This is a natural 
which is a leather shop, untreated, backpack leather strop. Uh, as you see, these have compound on them, okay? These have compounds, and the part that we move to next is what is compound. Compound, these are brand new, two brand new blocks from DLT, uh, DLTtrading.com, you can get these blocks. The black is, well, let me tell you what they are. All right, what compound is, is a waxy substance with grit. So it's a gritty, waxy bar. That's what it is. Compound is used in polishing everything from aluminum, stainless steel, chrome, and all. But you use the compound. Okay. So, black with DLT, I'll tell you about that, is 3,000 grit. Green is 6,000 grit. And white, which this is white that I use in my shop, but white is 12,000 grit. So it's essentially a 12,000 grit sandpaper. Um, on the industrial, uh, this is from Eastwood, which I get these big bars in. I'm doing all my work in the shop. Theirs runs pretty much the same. Uh, as far as the colors go, yeah, so it's the same. They're saying the same. So you got 3,000, 6,000, 12,000 grit. Okay. So how do you get this? on to here. Now we're going to work on this tri strop to begin with. Brad, again, awesome job brother. You can take this strop and just start coloring it up. Take the compound, put it to the strop, and start just coloring away. That works, okay? However, you're putting compound on the very surface. So when you take a 1095 high carbon and you start working it, you're almost dragging it off. See how it just about pulled it all right back off. So what you want to do is get, get that compound into the leather. Okay, get it embedded, impregnated, whatever you want to call it, but get it into the leather. So it's, it's, it ain't, you can't scrape it away. It's in there. Now, brad strops, and there's a couple other people that I've seen making strops, the glue they use can handle high temperatures. So you can take this, you can put it in the oven at 200 degrees for about 30 minutes, take it back out, it's nice and hot, and that waxy compound will melt, literally just melt right into the strop. For, you've got a strop you've mounted or anything like that, and you're not really good or don't feel comfortable putting the oven, no worries. Using a uh, using a heat gun or a, a hair dryer on high heat or a heat gun. Using a heat gun and get this thing, get this leather hot, okay? So get the leather hot so it'll want to absorb and melt that wax right into it. Now you're not trying to catch it on fire, you just want it good and temperatured up, okay? Then, remember this is wax, it's a waxy, gritty bar. So I'm gonna put some heat on it. See it starting to melt? Get that shine in it. Oh yeah. Now this is not this is not the only way to load up a strop or to put the compound on a strop. Okay, there are other ways to do it. However, what I've found, this is pretty much the quickest and easiest for me. You can take the spine of your knife and kind of scrape off some of this heavier stuff. Now that's the heavy stuff, but 
you can see it's still impregnated in the leather and the block. Okay, so that strop's actually ready to use. On the curved strop, I'm going to use green on it because green is pretty much my favorite grit. Okay, we're going to heat this one up and we're going to add some add some green rouge. Huh. What this is called is Jewelers Rouge. Okay, R-U-G-E, Jewelers Rouge, uh, which is a compound used for stropping. It's a polishing compound, more commonly known as Jewelers Rouge. Let's heat this one up and we'll get it done. So you didn't have to sit there and watch me the whole time uh, when I did it. So anyway, you know how it's done. Now, this will work on straight edges, recurved blades, curved blades, even your famous pocket knife. Okay. So now let's get to the fun part. How do you strop? Okay. The, there's two big mistakes that I've seen people make when they're stropping or stroping, depending on where you're from. The two biggest mistakes is number one is too much pressure. Okay. They are just bearing down and just, just getting at it. Okay. You don't need that much pressure. Uh, truthfully, the way I was taught, well, it's about six to eight pounds of pressure, which ain't a whole lot, okay? So six pounds of pressure is more than enough to do what you need to do. Uh, but is the too much pressure? So not a whole lot of pressure, okay? The second thing that I've seen most common is the wrong angle. Either you sharpen your knife on a a wicked edge or a guided sharpening system that tells you the exact angle so then you know you're this knife's at you know this knife's at 19 degrees or whatever uh, so if you can with your eye tell where 19 degrees is you're better than I. There's two ways one is using a magic marker take a magic marker and put a magic marker on the very edge of your knife then go down and then look and see if you got all that marker off of your knife. If you got it all, that's the right angle. So you'll continue at that angle. All right. The best way that I have found that I use over and over and over again, I'll take the knife and lay it on the strop. Okay. See how it just slides nice and easy. I'll start sliding it and picking up. When it bites, it bit right there. That's the angle that the edge is grounded. So that's the angle that I need to maintain while I'm sharpening or stropping. That way I am know I know that I am polishing and stropping the edge of that knife. Okay? Easy peasy, right? Now to see what your progress is Do the paper test. So that is sharp. Okay. So I know that my buck knife is sharp. Now, recurves and bigger blades take a little bit different technique. This is not a recurve, this one's going the other way. This one actually has a belly. Now, this knife is was made by Jason Knight. Uh, this is his custom bassoon fighter he made in his shop. So, Jason Knight, it's an awesome knife, man. Thing big, heavy, awesome knife. However, I want my knife sharp. So, I lay it down, I start sliding it. And then I start picking up. Right there, it bit. See how I can move it and it just bites. As soon as I try to go, it bites. So I want to do at that angle. 
And you see how I'm kind of picking up on it? That way I'm hitting all of it. Now, I do, I will do six to 10 per side, okay? And the reason I'm picking up, because you want that tip. You want to hit that tip. Six to ten per side, and then work them down. The main goal is when you're stropping, you are not removing material from the edge. Okay? Uh, sharpening, you're removing metal to make it sharp. Stroping, you're polishing the metal that's been removed. So you strope it and using a strop and then you end up with a big knife that cuts like a razor blade. Okay? Uh, you can also do a bite test. A bite test is when you take a piece of paper and you fold it and see if it bites. So. Boom, boom, boom. All right, any questions? Like I say, this ain't rocket surgery. Uh, there's no magic to it whatsoever. The magic is pressure and angle. Okay, so not holding a whole lot of pressure and using the correct angle. Now, see it bites in just soon. I, this is my bushy. I use this knife all the time. So I don't have to check. My, my muscle memory kicks in. I know where this knife's at. I know where the edge is. Um, but again, I'm not putting a whole lot of pressure here. You don't need a whole lot of pressure. And if you want to see how it's doing, I'm going to show you. See the edge? See how shiny it is? So that's what you're going for. You want that, just that, that mirror shine. Once you achieve that edge, that mirror, It takes a little bit of time, but but that's okay. It's not a rush. Take your time. Let's use this big fella here. Okay. There are also a couple of techniques on how you sharpen or strop a knife. I like going heel to tip. I like full length of my knife. Okay. But these straps are plenty big enough to do that. So I can do that. I can go full length and not have a worry. However, if I've got this little guy, if I've got this little guy out, there's no way I can go full length. Okay, there's not enough material. So you can go from heel to tip and pulling across, you see how I'm going? You can do it, again, you're just polished down the edge. So find where it bites and just pull it all the way across. Now, on these little pocket, pocket straps and the smaller straps, that's about the only way you can do it without having a big recurve. But that's okay, you can still get it done. Just, just be mindful, always pull, not with the edge, but back the edge. Always pull, the spine the edge. If you don't, 
<clears throat> you're going to cut your strop up. Okay. Done. Anybody, anybody want to see how sharp this one is? They're sharp. Any questions? Let's take the honey badger and we're going to knock that white down. But you can heal, there's barely a drag on that. Again, this is the 12,000 grit. You see it turning colors, see that? get you a sharp edge all the way down. Okay. So how about a Mark McCoon hawk? Same way. Again I like the green. I'm gonna lay my hawk down. I'm gonna find where it bites. It bit right there. So I know that this is a higher edge. I'm going to pull. You can either start these bearded hawks are a little different. But once you get the hang of putting it at that angle, Mark McCoon, it's a blacksmith. He does awesome work. Now, you can strop just like this. So I'm not barely moving it, I'm just going back and forth. Now I'm gonna zoom in and do a couple, but you can get, that's a sharp tomahawk. I'm gonna zoom in. Don't go nowhere. I'm using a small knife. This is the dark timber tabby. It's a small knife. This knife I skin with. So find the edge. Edge is right there. I keep the edge of my smaller knives at less of an angle. So And whatever's comfortable for you. Okay, the, the two things are angle and pressure and compound. For me, I like the green compound. It works well for me. You can feel it. You can hear it. it does a great job. I mean, that's 6,000 grit. Same old piece of paper. Mora carbon, okay, same deal. You want to find the angle? Right there's the angle. Y'all see a bite? That's the angle. So there's a super steel, a carbon, or a stainless. They all respond well to stropping. Again, the curved strop for recurved blades. Let's take a custom. And if you notice, I'm going full length. Now I'm just going to dress it up. Wow. 
wipe my edge off. Take a look at it. That looks good, y'all. She's sharp. She's very sharp. Again, I would really like to thank Brad Beamers. Okay. That's about all there is, folks. It, you know, it's, it's not real hard. Okay. It's, it's, it's very simple. Uh, very elementary. Uh, you're using a, a compound which has grit in it. And you're polishing the edge of your knife. Two big things are pressure and angle. And then what grit you use. Green, 6,000 grit is the most common I've seen. Black, 3,000. White, 12,000. Huge shout out to Peter Kohler with Dark Timber Knives, Hezekiah Minacho, uh, Dave Roffensberger. So these guys rock. Mark McCoon, Jason Knight, uh, all these guys. They're top shelf, top shelf people. You can't ask for better people, better workmanship. Uh, dark Timber Custom Knives, Dark Timber Blurs Hood. Okay. Anyway, that's it. I'm shutting up. Hey, y'all have an awesome day, and be awesome to each other. We'll see you.